Yeah. Yeah, we were staying in Adair. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, ended up having to come back because, um, he lost his job and the dude was being a pervert to me. Like telling me to send him things on his phone and doing things with them. Just to pay for it. Like. And I was like, look, I'm not doing it. And then he shut up about it, leave it alone for a week, and then. Try again. And I finally just got tired of it. I was like, look, just take us back. I'm not going to keep doing this with you every day. I said no. And then he waited till after we spent all of our, both of our food stamps, putting food in his house, and then tried making us sleep. But my smart butt went in there and got all my food while he was at work and hid it in our bags, which we didn't get to take all of our stuff either. Yeah, we, we he drove y'all back? Or? Yeah. But instead of packing all our stuff that we had in our room, I packed our food and some clothes and the dog stuff. And that was There's something in my heart that feels like fire. There's a yearning in the river and it feels like home and Take me down, take me down to the water I need time Give me time So what was life like before being homeless? Well, I mean, I was real big in school. I like, loved learning quick. Anytime somebody was talking, I was right at the, their feet, looking up at them. That's cool. Listen, and I studied some Greek and Roman mythology and uh, my mom passed away when I was nine and ended up having to grow up that, then become an adult and take care of all my siblings. How about you? I had to take care of my mom and my stepdad and my little, two little sisters and basically any of my other relatives that were around. So I didn't really get to have a childhood like I really wanted. I was in DHS custody when uh, after four years of taking care of my siblings, I was in DHS custody. I went to DHS custody and all my siblings kind of got split up. Some of them went out to my dad. Some of them went to other places. And then some of them were half siblings and, um, they got adopted out to places but uh, they kept putting me in places I really didn't like uh, um, I got a lot of energy I'm active but I don't like sitting still and so, so you haven't seen your siblings at all well I mean I, I've ran into them here and there, okay. you know, traveling. Okay. I've walked from here 
Texas to go see my family and my kids. When I was 15, my mom basically, well, my mom basically let her new boyfriend tell me that I act like too much like my dad and I look like my dad and he couldn't stand for me to be around. So they basically made me leave and my mom allowed it. I just haven't been able to get on my feet. So. And that was when you were 15? And how old are you now? 21. So it's been like six years. So the first night on the street, um, how did you feel? What were your thoughts? Survive. Make something of myself. Scared because even though whenever I was taking care of all my relatives and stuff, uh, they basically handed me everything I needed. They gave me a place to stay, the food, so I, all I had to do was ask them and they would get it for me. Yeah, there's been a couple of people that's tried pulling me in their cars and grabbing me. Like, when we were sleeping uh, over there by uh, the Route 66, uh, uh, little monument bridge mm -hmm. that they got over there on Riverside oh, yeah. going down Southwest Boulevard. Uh, we were staying underneath that uh, highway bridge, and uh, I ended up going to jail. And they left her with the dogs by herself and had to gather up all of her stuff. She asked if she could go to, had enough time to go to a quick trip to call her mom and come back to get her stuff. And by the time she made it back to get her stuff, they had it already packed it all and was throwing it away like they were cleaning it up and uh, when she had went up to QT to call her mom uh, some dude tried to pull her into his truck and my brother was the one that came out and was like hey leave the fuck alone or you're gonna have problems bro move the fuck around um, what, what dangers um, do y'all face and how do y'all protect yourself Yeah, won't the, let dog. Nobody touch the, you. the dogs uh, are being held. Has it happened before? Someone tried to touch you, a demon? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. That was one time when we were staying for the river. He had left me at the tank that was sick. I think it was cold. And it was going to the butcher to try to get me some food. And there was a dude that came to the tent. I didn't know this the window or nothing to look who it was. I just said I wasn't feeling good. And home to go away and I could see where he was bending down to unzip the tent and Dina started growling and he was like you got a pit in there with you I was like yeah it's a big pit so don't unzip that door and Dina was you. just a little puppy he but he was letting puppy. off a big growl like he was a big dog he, he did not hold back mm, really hard especially when you ain't got a place to go do laundry every day because wife keeps you closed and we're not being able to do laundry there, so it was really hard getting some clothes for our interviews and stuff like that. Like, McDonald's denied me because of what I was wearing for one of my interviews, just because I had dirt and stuff in my pants. Man, I, um... Don't tell everybody what you have. No, no not just that. Don't let people know where you stay. Like... Don't really let them see what's in your belongings or really too much. Like, I've learned it's a lot easier out here if you stay to yourself. Stay to yourself and pick like that chosen few that took us a long time before we even really talked to anybody and let people come. Because we've had too much shit stolen. Right. She she goes to work and I'm out trying to find work and while we're doing that people are taking off with uh, mm -hmm. propane heaters that we got for Christmas like I've gotten so much stuff from YST but this is all I have now 
the, the real like hard part is being lonely. Is that true? Well, I mean, it's a lot easier whenever you have somebody because then it, it splits up the things that you gotta do. I mean, there's people that wake up out here at five o'clock in the morning just to get started on getting everything mm. that they need done at their camp. Just so that way they can go and do the things that they need to do to get on their feet. Like, we've had to get up super early just to do that. And then she goes to work on her feet and it's just, it's, it's tiring. Have you we ever, walk up and down that levee hill yeah. 24-7. We gotta go get water. It's tough. It was a lot easier with our bikes, but our bikes went down. It's a lot harder. Well, I mean, trying to get comfortable on what I showed earlier. No, man, video, quit. Tossing and turning all night, losing sleep. I mean, it drags you through the day, so like, sometimes we don't wake up until one, noon, one, two o'clock sometimes. And the only reason why we wake up is because it's too hot and we're sweating. And then most of the day's gone, so we gotta spend the rest of the day gathering firewood for to cook oh, going yeah. to get water cooking. so y'all have a pot and pans and stuff y'all be cooking yeah oh, okay and i got that little grill thing in the fire pit oh. but in the summer you gotta be picky about when you eat it's normally pretty late because it's too hot to be sitting by the fire trying to cook mm -hmm. during the day. So you normally just eat one time unless you're buying something from somewhere. There's been times when we didn't have no money and we sat up at QT not asking people for money but asking them just to buy us something to eat. And they told us no for like three hours and then finally I was like, look, babe, You've already said you're starving eight times and going in and I'm stealing you something to eat. And I had to do that a few times for her. Like I mean, I've some been, of the things almost I've irritate me. I've called the river rat, uh, a dumpster girl. I've been told to go get a job, go ask your parents for some money. Why aren't you with your parents? One even told me to go stand on the corner and make more money that way. Well, no, he said go shake your ass on the corner and make the money that way. People will pay more for that than you just ask them. That's crazy. That's disrespectful. And that, that set me off. And then we were sitting up there and... There Somebody there basically tried buying me from him. For yeah. Like, he tried offering uh, $300 to take me to his house or whatever and let me shower and he was gonna go buy me these clothes and this and that. He was gonna bring me back but he wanted to give him $300 to take me. And I was like, you got your rabbit ass money. You either pull off or I'm, I'm gonna pull you off out that motherfucker. Cause uh, now I, I've heard, well it's been going on for a while, human trafficking. And so I feel like, you know, girls who are on the street Obviously, I feel like dudes try to, you know, take them in traffic. That's, that's insane. Yeah, there's been a couple of times, she, like, she'll be walking home from work and people will try to pick her up and follow her. And she'll call me and they'll see me coming down the levee. And when I get to her and I hug her, they normally take off and drive faster to get away just because there's somebody there to protect them. You know? And, uh, like, like I said, we, we were sitting up at QT and there's been multiple times where my people have, have tried to run her over walking through the parking lot. 